In a few years, we'll be getting a Captain Marvel movie. Actually, we're technically getting two. One of them is from Marvel, guess what that one's called, and the other one is from DC, titled Shazam, after the character of the same name, who originally was also called Captain Marvel, but wasn't originally owned by DC. It's it's all pretty complicated, but hopefully we can shed some light on who owns the name Captain Marvel. Welcome to Comic Misconceptions, I'm Scott, and I could have done the smart thing and waited until some big news or announcement regarding the Captain Marvel movie came out before posting this video to hopefully give it an SEO boost via tentpole programming, capitalizing on search trends and audience interests, but I didn't. Just wanted to talk about Captain Marvel today. There have been quite a few comic book characters to take on the name Captain Marvel over the years, and I am definitely not going to touch on all of them, though we will talk about the main ones and even a super obscure one. Mostly though, I just wanted to talk about the crazy stories and legal issues involving the name Captain Marvel in comics. The very first Captain Marvel in comics was this guy right here that many of you might know as the DC character called Shazam nowadays. Originally though, he first appeared under the name Captain Marvel in Wiz Comics number two from 1940, created by C.C. Beck and Bill Parker from the publisher Fawcett Comics. Then director Roscoe Kent Fawcett said that he told his team to specifically create a Superman character, only make him a young boy instead of a man. You see, in order to attract more young readers to comic books, writers started creating kid sidekicks in the early 40s. Robin, Bucky, Speedy, they were all created as a way to relate to kids who read the comics better than the adult heroes could. But the problem is that the sidekicks were just that sidekicks. What's great about Captain Marvel is that he was the first, or at least the first notable example in comics, of a kid who was himself the hero. In case you don't know the backstory of Captain Marvel, I will give you an incredibly brief rundown of it right now, but just like last week, if you want a more in-depth origin story, I'll put a link in the description to my friend Eris's video over at Variant, who once again did a great job of it. But the very essence of his origin is that a young boy named Billy Batson was bestowed the gift of magical superpowers by an old wizard named Shazam. Whenever Billy said that word, he would go from a young boy Boy and turn into the adult Captain Marvel. Magical superpowers and all. Also, Shazam at the time was a made up word, and I don't know why that blows my mind, but it does. I always figured they took the word from somewhere, but either way, that's just a brief summary of the character, just so we're all on the same page. Needless to say, the idea of a magic word that can turn a kid into a superhero made Captain Marvel an incredibly successful hit. You have this great cartoony art style and fun stories that didn't take themselves too seriously, and suddenly Captain Marvel is so popular that he becomes the first official comic book superhero starring in a live action adventure serial in 1941 that was surprise surprise another success Shazam There was even a time when Captain Marvel books were outselling Superman and DC did not like that. You see, with the early success of Superman, many other comic publishers tried to introduce Superman-like characters into their own comics, but were quickly shut down by DC. But Captain Marvel was Superman's biggest competition yet, so DC sent a cease and desist letter to Fawcett saying that their character was a ripoff of the Man of Steel and they needed to stop publishing Captain Marvel comics. Fawcett had already dealt with DC before regarding one of their other characters, Master Man, but they wanted to fight this one, so they didn't stop publishing Captain Marvel comics, and in 1941, DC sued Fawcett for copyright infringement. The case wasn't actually brought to trial until 1948, and in that time, Captain Marvel remained super popular. There were even some months where issues reportedly sold anywhere between 1.3 million to 2 million copies twice a month. And to put that in perspective, the best-selling issue of 2014 was Amazing Spider-Man number one, which had only sold half a million copies the month it came out. With superhero comics slowly dying out after World War II, Fawcett's sales dropped significantly. So with the trials flip-flopping back and forth in favor of one publisher or the other, Fawcett decided that it wasn't financially smart to keep fighting DC. And in 1952, they settled out of court and paid DC $400,000 and stopped making Captain Marvel comics. Now here's where the story gets interesting. Two decades later, in 1972, DC Comics approaches Fawcett Comics, interested in licensing the rights to Captain Marvel and the entire Marvel family and reviving them inside the DC universe. DC eventually bought the characters completely in the 80s and published a miniseries called Shazam! The New Beginning. But why isn't that book called Captain Marvel, like the main character? Well, you see, during the decade or so after the lawsuit was settled, the Captain Marvel trademark was just kinda out there for anyone to take. Fawcett couldn't use it per their deal with DC, and DC didn't even know that they wanted the characters yet. This led to a brand new Captain Marvel in the mid-60s from a different publisher, but no, it's probably not the one you're thinking of. 
It's a character created by a comic book publisher known as MF Enterprises. This character is just the worst. His power is that he can detach his limbs by yelling the word split and bring them back together by saying Zam. That's X-A-M. And that's it. I can't decide if that's better or worse than Arm Fall Off Boy. The series lasted only four issues, but legend has it that it was this character that caught the attention of yet another company and inspired them to create their own Captain Marvel character, and this time, file for a trademark. And yes, this company is Marvel Comics, who in the late 60s gained the trademark for the name Captain Marvel, most likely because they just wanted to snatch up anything with the word Marvel in it. They released their first comic with a hero by that name in Marvel Super Heroes number 12 from 1967, a Kree space fleet captain named Marvel. This would end up being real Really bad news for DC when they started introducing Captain Marvel back into their own comics a decade or so later. They had the copyright to the character, but not the trademark on his name. This would mean that inside the comics they could call the character Captain Marvel, but they could not advertise or promote the comic using that name. And this is why DC titled the comics Shazam, and eventually just changed the character's name completely to that as well with the launch of the New 52. In regards to Marvel comics, you may have noticed that there is a butt ton of characters that take on the mantle of Captain Marvel. There's the original Marvel, there's the first one that I was introduced to, Monica Rambeau, who made her debut in the early 80s, and a handful of others, but probably the most notable, I would assume, since she's getting her own movie soon, is Carol Danvers, who first appeared in Marvel Super Heroes number 13 from 1968. Once again, a very brief rundown of the character because it is a bit confusing. She was a friend and love interest of Marvel, the original Captain Marvel. When a Kree device exploded, it caused her to absorb some of Marvel's DNA, turning her into a human Kree hybrid and giving her some superpowers. She adopted the name Miss Marvel with her own series in 1977 and just recently adopted the name Captain Marvel in 2012. Not long ago at all. Now, like I said, Marvel has a ton of characters who have had the name Captain Marvel over the years, so why is that name tossed around so much? Well, it's pretty simple. When it comes to trademarks, it's not enough just to have one. You actually need to publish something every once in a while to help prove that you're trying to enforce your trademark. If you do nothing with it and you don't try to enforce it, then you could effectively lose it. And if Marvel ever lost the trademark, you can bet that DC would jump in and grab it as fast as they possibly could. So in order to enforce their trademark on the name, Marvel would release a new Captain Marvel comic at least every few years. The problem is that none of Marvel's past Captain Marvel characters have ever been historically a huge hit. So Marvel kept coming up with new characters to fill that role, hoping that one would be a big success with the readers. Now Carol Danvers is probably Marvel's best shot right now of keeping that trademark. Which kind of makes you wonder if one of Marvel's ulterior motives behind making the 2018 Captain Marvel film is to further protect that trademark. It's at least interesting to think about, I think. Probably doesn't hurt. And that is the somewhat complicated story of the Captain Marvel name in comics, from its origin in Fawcett to where it lies right now at Marvel. I hope that was as interesting to learn about as it was for me to research. Question though, out of all the characters who have ever been called Captain Marvel, who is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. I mean, it's not really fair. We all know it's the detachable limb guy, for sure. Quick announcement, next week I will hopefully be on the Weekly Poll podcast live right here on YouTube, so go check that out if you are interested in that sort of thing. I'll try to put more information in the description if you're interested. And if this is your first time hanging out with us here at NerdSync, we'd love you to hit that big sexy subscribe button. We do weekly comic book videos just like this one every Wednesday, and we don't want you to miss out on any of it. So, subscribe like I just said. And once again, I'm Scott. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram. And we'll see you right here next week for more things I thought you knew about comics.